let me just sort of go to the uh, core of it, why we are doing this. Uh, it is because uh, China is changing its economic growth model, and China, as a result of that, will open up a whole range of new and different uh, economic opportunities for international business, including Australia. China will reach 70% uh, urbanisation by mid-century. So not only do we have rising rapidly per capita income levels across China, and in cities in particular, you're also seeing rapidly rising uh, urbanisation. Uh, as of 2001, more than half of Asia's trade was intra-regional. That is, one economy of Asia with another. If you look to 2009, that had edged up a bit further, approaching 53.3%, and so the trajectory increases again into the future. And so, therefore, uh, the strong relative significance of China to Korea, China to Japan, Japan to Korea, etc., uh, is a phenomenon of itself. I often hear the criticism uh, from Australian corporates uh, that um, the problem with folk who've got really good Chinese, whether they are Australian-born Chinese uh, or whether they are um, you know, obviously Australian Chinese citizens or uh, whether they are Caucasians like me, who decided to have their own misspent youth uh, studying Chinese, is that if you're into the widget industry, like you are, um, in whatever you sell to China, uh, or if you're into um, the recycling of tyres, you can say, well, these guys are terrific. These guys and girls are terrific at language. They can entertain most people at a dinner party. They don't have a fig of knowledge about my particular industry. Well, my response to that is, so what? Your job is to train them. Bring them in, regarded as a three-year apprenticeship, and teach them everything there is to know about the tyre recycling business or the widget business or the education business. Um, it's a bit like um, you know, attracting a raw recruit to any business. Just take them under your wing, remunerate them, look after them, and teach them something they don't know because they've got services to provide to you that you don't have. We're going to need Australians with bilingual skills. And this is something that we're going to have to plan for through the school education system and the university system here in Australia. We've got a long way to go with that, but I'm, I think we're really at a moment where there's going to be a lot of demand from the business sector for Chinese language skills, and I was really pleased to hear the Minister today supporting that. Well, I think particularly interesting for us was the mention of the focus on the services industry uh, in the 12th five-year plan. Uh, also, also the, the, the fact that China growth isn't being driven out of the, the existing mega cities, but also the emerging mega cities in the inland areas, um, with 102 cities with population greater than 5 million people. And, and that's, that's, that's great with that. Yeah, that's particularly interesting for ANZ as we have a presence in Chengdu and Chongqing. If you've been to China, you can actually see what he's saying. It's happening on the ground. Um, the old China of the intensive industry, let's make it as cheap as we can, let's get it to the rest of the world and they'll pay for it, approach is certainly coming to an end. Um, the standard of living is really escalating greatly and the Chinese are asking questions about their own lifestyle and their own quality of life. To me, again, I think what uh, Mr Rudd was talking about in terms of understand culture, understand people, um, we're all the same, we're all blood and bone and we all really aspire to the same sorts of things. That's really going to be, I think, one of the major, um, I think, benchmarks that we need to understand in China. Having been there a number of times, China's different. Um, and if you're not prepared to accept the difference and work with the difference, then you won't be successful. 